in this video, we're going to take a look at how to read pictographs. And we're going to use two different examples. Now, pictographs are just a type of graph that uses pictures to show numbers or to show amounts of something. Now, in this particular pictograph, we see up here a title. Most graphs will give you a title at the top. Sometimes they'll put it somewhere else, but most of the time it's at the top. It tells us that this particular pictograph tells us the number of trains that pass through five towns each day. And it looks like we have a list of towns, Littleton, Bigton, Smallton, Largeton, and Charlton. And then we have all these little pictures. They all look like little trains. Well, down here is an important clue. It's a key for this graph. It tells us that each one of these pictures stands for one train. Sometimes in pictographs, they'll stand for one of the object, like this one does. But sometimes they'll stand for more than one. So it's very important to look for the key and know what each of the pictures in the graph stands for. Now, you'll notice in this graph that we don't have these pictures given to us in number form. So let's make it a little bit easier. Count out all of the pictures, and then on the side of them right here, we're going to put it in number form, remembering that each train stands for one. So for Littleton, we have one, two, three. So there are three trains that pass through. In Bigton, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there are twelve trains that pass through. In Smallton, we have one, two, three trains. In Largeton, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten trains. And in Charlton, we have one, two, three, four, five. Now this will help us when we start answering the questions that we have. So our first question says, which town has the most trains pass through it each day? They also want us to tell how many. So we're looking for the most, and how many is that? Well, the most is the one that would have the line or the set of pictures that is the longest of all of them, which we can see is this one right here. It goes farther than all of the others. And by our numbers here, we see that it is Big Ten, and they have 12 trains. So Big Ten, and it has 12 trains. Okay, our second question. Which town has the fewest trains pass through it each day, and how many? So we want the fewest and how many. Fewest means the one that has the least. Well, if we look, these two right here are really small. And if we look at our numbers, they each only have three. So that means we actually have a tie for the town that has the fewest number of trains. We have Littleton and Smallton with three trains each. All right, our next question. Which town has 10 trains pass through it each day? So we're looking for 10 trains. Well, since we did our counting earlier, we can see that the one with 10 is Largeton. Largeton has 10 trains. Here's our next question. How many more trains pass through Charlton than Littleton each day? So we're looking for Charlton and Littleton. Now right here it says how many more? And when I see that, that's going to make me realize that I need to find the difference between the two. I don't want to add them together because it's not asking how many do they have together. 
So I need to find the difference. I need to subtract. So if we look up here, Charlton has five. Littleton has three. Five minus three is two. So there are two more trains that pass through Charlton. We have one more question left, and I'm going to slide it up so we can see it. Johnston has 11 trains pass through it each day. How does that compare with the towns in the pictograph? So it says it has 11 trains. Well, if we look, it's going to have less trains than Bigton, but more than Littleton, more than Smallton, more than Largeton, and more than Charlton. So it's going to have less than Bigton, more than the other four. Let's try another pictograph. Now in this pictograph, you'll notice that our key is a little bit different. We're using books in this one, and it tells us here that each picture stands for 10 books. So this is very important. When we count, we're not going to count one, two, three. We're going to be counting by tens, 10, 20, 30, and so on. Now for this pictograph, this shows the number of books read by five students in one year. So if we notice, we have Sophia. Jacob, Isabella, Mason, and Emma. So let's go ahead and write in numbers by counting the books in sets of 10, how many each one read, and then we're gonna write it in number form right here. So Sophia had 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So Sophia read 60 books over the course of a year. Now, if you know your multiplying facts, you can also multiply these. This would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 10. Okay, that might make it a little bit easier. All right, for Jacob, Jacob has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. He happens to have the same amount as Sophia. So he also has 60 books. Isabella only has one picture here, and remember that one picture stands for 10 books. So Isabella read 10 books this year. Mason has three. That's 10, 20, 30. 30 books, or three times 10. Let's take a look at Emma's. Emma has 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 books, or 5 books times 10 for each book. So, let's take a look at the questions we have for this pictograph. The first one says, who read the most books? And they want to know how many. Well, if we look to see who has the biggest number, since we've written them in numbers, we'll see that, much like the last one, we actually have a tie. Sophia and Jacob both had 60. Emma only had 50, Mason 30, and Isabella 10. So Sophia and Jacob each read 60. Sophia and Jacob each read 60 books. All right, the next one. Who read the fewest and how many? So if you take a look at our graph, who read the fewest and how many did they read? Well, if we look at which one is the fewest number of pictures, it'd be this one right here that only has one. That would be Isabella. And Isabella only read 10 books. Remember, it's not one because our key tells us that one stands for 10 books books. 
how many books were read by all five students. So that means we need to add all of these together. Now, I could add the numbers that I have together here, or counting by tens, I could count all of the pictures. So I know I have 50 here, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, 200, 210. So there were a total of 210 books read this year by the five students. Our last question. How many fewer books did Isabella read than Jacob? Fewer books. I need to find the difference again. I'm going to subtract. So Jacob read 60 books. Isabella only read 10. 60 minus 10 is 50 books. So she read 10. He read 60. It's 50 fewer books for Isabella. I hope this helps you in learning how to read pictographs.